Are you looking for the best iPhone screen protector for your SE, 5S, 6, 6S, 7, 8, or even your X? Well, there isn't one that is the best. There are many that work incredibly well, and it's hard for me to say which one because, well, screen protectors are just so different. There's so many different types. To answer the question, the best screen protector for your iPhone, it really depends on what you're looking for with a screen protector. Based on all the iPhones and screen protectors that I've broken over the last few years, here are the four different types of screen protectors. You got your cheap glass ones, which kind of cover most of your iPhone screen. They, you won't feel bad if it cracks because they're so cheap, and the screen protector might be very noticeable. Expensive glass screen protectors, some of these might be chemically treated. Most likely these are glass edge to edge screen protectors. There might be some special features with them, and they generally will look the best on your iPhone. The next type of screen protector is cheap plastic ones, which basically prevent scratches. That's it. There's a tiny amount of impact protection and the viewability of the screen protector will degrade over time. Expensive plastic screen protectors. They offer the best protection uh, out of any screen protector that I've used. They won't crack. Uh, most likely are reusable and washable. And some of them I have features that include uh, self-healing over time, which is neat. So in the next few minutes, I'm gonna do a deep dive with the different types of screen protectors that I've used over the last few years, as well as talk about an exciting new different screen protector that kind of died for the six and looks like it may be coming back for the iPhone 8 and the X's. We'll see. Real usage, real reviews. Mobile reviews, eh? .ca. At Mobile Reviews A, Monty and I base all our reviews on actual usage. And yes, we have a box filled with broken glass. Like it's, we keep every single screen protector that we break. This one, well, this is a topaz and this thing took a beating. So in the last few years, I've spent a lot of time destroying screen protectors and filming <laughs> me destroying screen protectors and iPhones. And basically everything I've learned from doing all that's pretty much gonna be summed up in this video. And yes, I should really re-examine my life decision-making paradigms because if this is all I've learned from smashing thousands of dollars of iPhones, well, seems a little sad, but it was a lot of fun. Don't get me wrong, it was a lot of fun. Cheap plastic screen protectors. Now these screen protectors are usually included with cheap cases. I know that the OtterBox commuter used to come with one. Most of the Silk Innovation cases that are under 15 bucks have one and the Ghost Tech cloaks have them as well. Now from my perspective, these thin cheap plastic screen protectors have one job to protect your iPhone from tiny scratches. Now, a bad drop of this type of screen protector will result in a broken screen. Fingerprinting is gonna be an issue as there won't be any sort of oleophobic coating, the fingerprint resistant coating. The viewability of the screen protector is gonna suffer a bit because of the fingerprinting, and depending on the quality of the plastic, it actually may diffuse the Retina HD screen of your iPhone. I will also add that it's gonna be pretty hard to reuse these screen protectors because of the thinness. Now, I'll be honest with you, the average person who rarely drops their phones and just needs a little something for protection will be very happy with this type of screen protector. With that being said, I wouldn't go out of my way to buy this type of screen protector. If it comes with a case, great. But it's like gas station sushi. If it's free, you might eat it, but you're not gonna go specifically to the gas station to buy sushi. That's a bad idea. Cheap glass screen protectors. Well, if you go to Amazon and you search for iPhone screen protectors, you will be bombarded by tons of products under $10. I've gone and bought several of these products, um, and the ones that stand out are the ones from ESR and JetTech, mostly because they're better, they're the best out of all the cheap stuff that I've bought. Um, but the marketing fluff on them is quite incredible, especially on the ESR package. It has like words like five times stronger plastic on the front, a 10 kilogram anti-shock ability, and an oleophobic coating that lasts 12 months. Now, all those features sound amazing, like great. Five times stronger? Five times stronger than what? Tissue paper? I don't know, it doesn't say. 10 kilogram anti-shock ability? I don't even know how that would work. That doesn't make any sense to me, why they would put that out there. And the last thing is like the oleophobic coating. I know, from my understanding from talking to different manufacturers of screen protectors, the oleophobic coating lasts between one and three months. Cheap stuff, one month, good stuff, three months. 12 months by ESR, they've somehow found the holy grail of oleophobic coatings and decide to sell each product for about five bucks. So I don't, I really don't think that's the case, but mini rant aside, I will say that these cheap tempered glass screen protectors are way better than the cheap plastic screen protectors. Why? Because it still maintains the general feel of the iPhone screen in terms of viewability and usability. And I'll be honest with you, unless you base your value as a human being on how expensive your stuff is, the average person really isn't gonna know the difference between a $5 glass screen protector and a $40 glass screen protector. But that doesn't mean an expensive glass protector doesn't have its place, as most of the cheap ones won't be edge to edge and generally won't last as long. 
If you're looking to get a set of cheap glass screen protectors, I personally would go with the ESR version because they include an installation kit, which makes the install extremely simple. I will also add that any type of glass screen protector, I've got a Tech 21, this is about a $40 screen protector on this iPhone 8 Plus, and I, did, I was unhappy with the alignment of the screen protector, and so I had to peel it off, and I bent the corner too much, so that corner won't stick. So that's another downside to glass screen protectors. So you gotta be very, very careful on how you install it. Next up are the expensive plastic screen protectors. And unlike the glass equivalents, there's actually a very large difference between cheap plastic screen protectors and expensive plastic screen protectors. Examples of expensive screen protectors would include products like the Rhino Shield Impact Shield, Bodyguard HD Impact, and the Tech 21 Impact Shield. In a nutshell, the more expensive the plastic screen protector is, the better impact protection it's gonna offer your iPhone. If you want to see another comparison between plastic and glass, I've done a comparison video between the Evolutive Labs Impact Shield shield and their edge-to-edge -edge screen protector and I go into more details between those two products in that video. Expensive plastic screen protectors are also going to be easier to reuse so if you're considering getting a waterproof case like the Hit Case Pro or the Pro Shot, consider getting the plastic screen protector. Why? Because you can't use screen protectors with those products so if you're planning on doing some snorkeling, underwater swimming, video capture, you're going to have to strip your iPhone bare in order to use it with that uh, type of product. So you don't want to use a glass one because the moment there's a small chip it's going to crack and you've basically wasted $40. But with a plastic screen protector, you can take it off, um, put it somewhere, like even on a counter, and when you're done swimming or you have to, you're done your vacation, you can easily just take the screen protector, wash it, air dry it, and reapply it. The washing of the screen protector is gonna be handy if you accidentally get dust and dirt between the iPhone screen and the screen protector. Expensive plastic screen protectors will still suffer from the same fingerprinting and viewability issues as the thin screen protectors, and the impact resistant screen protectors will most likely never come in an edge-to-edge -edge form, which means despite being the tougher product, it's gonna expose the edges of your iPhone. Why this happens? Well, in order to maintain the same level of impact protection, the plastic screen protectors would need to be quite a bit thicker in order to have a curve like the edge of the iPhone does. Now, should this flaw matter for most people, the chance of an impact occurring right along the unprotected edge of the iPhone is actually quite low. But full disclosure, it definitely has happened to me when I dropped a 200 gram steel ball um, from about five feet onto an iPhone covered in an impact shield on the floor. Yeah, that sucked. As I mentioned before, plastic screen protectors do not offer the same clarity as glass, and certain uh, screen protectors may have a yellowing effect, so it may look like uh, your iPhone's discoloring underneath it. It's not, it's the screen protector. Scratch resistance sits between 3H to 6H, so keys and coins will scratch the screen protector, but certain products have a self-healing feature that minimizes day-to-day -day scratches. I will say that this self-healing feature sounds incredibly cool, um, but taking a steak knife to your screen protector will still result in a pretty ugly gash. Now at the end of the day, I would definitely recommend these thick, expensive plastic screen protectors to anybody who is very clumsy, who drops their phones a lot, or decides to let their kids use their phones as toys. Um, you can spend the same amount of dollars on a glass one and it will chip after one to two drops, but with a plastic screen protector, it will last as long as your iPhone. So. That's my recommendation for expensive plastic screen protectors. If you're looking for a solid type of screen protector, I definitely recommend getting a Rhino Shield Impact Shield. These things are thicker than the average uh, screen protector, but they provide rock solid impact protection. Now before we get to the expensive glass screen protectors, if you're finding this video useful, uh, consider getting all your gadgets or all your screen protectors through my Amazon links. This video is unsponsored and it's basically like an accumulation of hundreds of hours of <laughs> screen protector reviews over the last few years. Uh, so it, all the products that you buy through the Amazon links won't cost you anymore and I get a small commission so that I can make more videos in the future. And it doesn't have to be the uh, products that I link to. As long as you use my link to go to Amazon, I'll get credit for whatever you buy. So it can help me out in that manner as well. Okay, expensive glass screen protectors. From my perspective, there are four different types of screen protectors and they kind of revolve around the coverage and the fit. The four types include standard fit, standard fit with rounded corners, and edge to edge, and edge to edge with rounded corners. Now, before I elaborate on the types, I do need to explain to you, if you don't know, the differences between regular tempered glass and other more expensive types of glass, such as Asahi glass, as well as Gorilla glass. And I'll also talk about the differences in oleophobic coatings. Every glass screen protector basically starts off as a piece of tempered glass. There are different types of tempered glass, but I believe the variance between these products are actually quite minimal. 
Certain manufacturers will use Japanese Asahi glass, which is supposedly better than, you know, the really cheap stuff. And other manufacturers will use actually islands glasses, which is slightly clearer than your average tempered glass screen protector. But at the end of the day, there's a good chance you won't see the difference between the quality of glass on a day-to-day -day basis. I've yet to come across a glass screen protector where I've like said, wow, that glass is yellow. I've definitely said that for plastic screen protectors, but not for glass. So that 99% clarity, 93.2% clarity almost doesn't matter for the average person. Well, for me anyways. Now certain products may say that they're Gorilla Glass or they're chemically treated glass, which is still a piece of tempered glass, but it's been dipped in a chemical solution. That's basically what your Corning Gorilla Glass is, chemically treated glass. Officially, companies have to use a license from Corning in order to use Gorilla Glass in their products. This is something that Belkin has done with their screen protectors. Others have to call their products just chemically treated tempered glass, which is what the Patchworks does. Now on the topic of Patchwork, I personally like the ITG Silica Glass as it's the only product that I've been able to repeatedly use on multiple iPhones. The only glass product I have to elaborate. It's crazy how strong the screen protector is, but the downside is that it doesn't offer edge-to-edge -edge protection. And when it comes to the oleophobic coating, so the uh, fingerprint resistant smudges, there's, I already told you there's two different kinds. Cheap kind, expensive kind. Now the cheap kinds are just sprayed on, whereas in the expensive ones are statically applied on. And so the expensive ones will last about three months, which is kind of crazy. Like if you look at all the marketing across all these different uh, screen protector packages, you'll notice that oleophobic coatings is a big part of their marketing, but that piece only lasts one to three months. As the same goes for the oleophobic coating on your iPhones. It only lasts for a few months. And so for the ESR product, which has 12 months worth of oleophobic coating, the holy grail of screen protectors, and they're gonna sell it for five bucks. All right, let's talk about the different fits of expensive glass screen protectors. The first one is, well, you can spend $40 and you get a standard fit screen protector, like this Tech 21, and basically it covers almost all of the touchable area of the iPhone. It stops short of where the curve of the iPhone actually starts. Standard fit screen protectors, from my perspective, include this Tech 21 Evil Glass and this Alexar screen protector. Now, I'll be honest with you, I really can't tell the difference between a Tech 21 screen protector that is about 40 bucks and this $5 ESR screen protector, which is scary to me. What makes it worse is that the one that I have, which is my third Tech 21 Evil Glass screen protector, doesn't fully adhere to the iPhone screen. So there's a manufacturing flaw here. So for 40 bucks, you get some gaps, which isn't cool. Definitely, if this happens to you, take it back. These standard fit screen protectors usually have quite sharp edges to them and are a little more susceptible to chipping because of the sharp edges. The Patchworks ITG Silica Glass I was talking about earlier would fall into this category of a standard fit screen protector. Other products that fall into the standard fit category include products from mine. And these, my product, they were incredibly disappointing, mostly because you could sneeze along the edge and they would chip. I believe the Autobox Alpha Glass would fall into this category as well as the Alpha Glass doesn't have an adhesive on the glass area. Well, the one that I used didn't. Uh, so you may think that this is an odd feature, but Autobox isn't the only one. I've got one from Moshi, which has the same feature. I personally don't like it because dust will accumulate along the edges of the screen protector over time. Next up, I'm gonna talk about standard fit screen protectors with rounded corners. Two examples of these types of products include the Belkin Invisible Glass and this Beacon Glaster. Now, I personally really like the Belkin Invisible Glass due to the thinness and strength of the product. It's made from Corning Gorilla Glass 2. But the problem is that the screen protector only covers the touchable area of the iPhone, but the rounded edge will reduce the chance that your screen protector will chip, so it'll last longer than your standard fit screen protector. The rounded edges can be very subtle. As the speed in glasters, it's almost impossible to tell visually, but if you run your fingers along the edge of the screen protector, it's definitely not sh as sharp as some of the cheaper glass screen protectors. The next category are the edge-to-edge -edge screen protectors, which have become quite popular since the iPhone 6. The first edge-to-edge -edge screen protector I used for the iPhone 6 was the Cinder by Cupert, and this thing just absolutely blew my mind because it was protection. It was a piece of glass that fit over the entire iPhone screen, which is pretty cool. Now, I don't think they're in business anymore. Um, I think they had some manufacturing issues, but I still remember my uh, Cinder uh, review very, very fondly, and then reading all those comments about how well, it's not good at all. Now within edge to edge screen protectors, there's two types. You've got ones with rounded edges and ones without. Now about 75% of all the screen protectors I've reviewed and seen in the last year have been edge to edge screen protectors. It seems like a factory out in Asia figured out how to make them on a mass scale because everybody has a version of an edge to edge screen protector. And I'll be honest with you, I can't tell the difference between most of these products. The biggest selling point of your standard edge to edge screen protector is that it protects the entire glass face of your iPhone. These type of screen protectors will last longer than your standard fit one 
one because the edges are actually very hard to chip. I've yet to find a product which has a rounded edge that I've been able to chip with my fingernails, which is something I could easily do with most standard fit screen protectors. The full cover also has a cleaner look for your iPhone, so nothing's really jutting out, everything looks very smooth. Another tiny upside of a uh, full edge-to-edge -edge glass screen protector is that if you have a white iPhone, you can buy a black screen protector to turn the front of your iPhone black. So, you know, if stuff like that, if you want to be slightly different, you could go that route with an edge-to-edge -edge screen protector. It's a cosmetic thing, sure, but still worth noting. Every edge-to-edge -edge screen protector product I've come across claims to have 9H hardness. Clarity of some sort is responsive to touch, which I really hope so, and provides full coverage. If you are going to be getting an edge-to-edge -edge screen protector, make sure it's a 3D edge and not a 2.5D edge. A 3D edge will follow the uh, curve of the iPhone wears in 2.5D does not, but you'll have to look real close to see the difference. The biggest downside of edge to edge screen protectors is the fact that certain cases won't work with them. You could always risk getting one brand of screen protector and another brand of cases and kind of hope for the best, but the simplest thing to do is just to get a screen protector and the case from the same manufacturer. At least you'll know that they will fit. If you are looking for this type of edge to edge screen protector with a rounded edge, I would definitely check out the 9H Tempered Glass Screen Protector by Evolutive Labs, the Yolo Shield 3D, and maybe the Topaz by Winter Gear. I know the original Topaz was tough as nuts, but the newer one I've yet to use, so maybe approach that one with a bit, uh, with a grain of salt, or stay tuned to my channel for the review. Now, the last category of edge to edge screen protectors that I want to talk about, and there's only one product that falls into this uh, category, and it's an edge to edge screen protector without the rounded edges, which means the edge is incredibly thin, but also means that the edge is a little weak. If you're planning on just getting a screen protector for your iPhone and not a case, definitely stay away from this type of screen protector. The biggest strength of this design is that it's a bit more forgiving when it comes to fitting with cases. That's it. Other than that feature, everything else I've said for all the glass screen protectors up until this point will apply to this category as well. The Thanotech E2E glass is probably one of the highest quality pieces of glass that I've come across. They only feel because it's inc incredibly smooth and it fits well with other cases. So again, I just really wanted to point, point out that product. If you're looking for something that's a bit more forgiving with your cases, consider getting the uh, Thanotech E2E glass. It's expensive, but again, that's why it falls into the expensive glass category. Before I talk about the screen protector that I'm excited to see a resurgence for, I do want to talk about the adhesives on the back of the screen protectors. Now, I've yet to find a brand where the adhesive results in a lot of bubbles. I know that was an issue years ago, but I think the adhesive producers have figured a way to make everything bubbleless. Even if bubbles show up during the initial install, they will most definitely disappear after 24 hours. So the only thing I want to add is that if you have a minor crack on your iPhone, getting the adhesives from your screen protectors will definitely fill it in a bit. So it will actually hide that eyesore slightly. So um, another reason to get a glass screen protector, or you should have had one before breaking into the screen of your iPhone. Now the one type of screen protector that I'm excited to see come back is actually the screen protectors with buttons on the bottom of right beside the home button. Now I know there were several brands that were producing this type of screen protector for the iPhone 6, but with the introduction of Force Touch on the iPhone 6s, 7, and 8, those manufacturers have largely disappeared because it doesn't work. Um, except for this company called Gnombus, they are working on solving that problem and they're going to be sending me samples in the next few weeks. So I'm excited to see how well that feature works. I love using my iPhone 7 Pluses and 8 Pluses, but the top corners, the buttons at, at the top corners are generally very hard to get to unless you double tap the home button, but that's still kind of a hassle. Uh, so being able to access that part of your screen with one hand without having to do some weird hand acrobatics is going to be pretty awesome, we'll say. So that's all I got for this video. Again, if you found it useful and you've made it this far, I got to give you guys a thumbs up. But if you found this any content in this video useful, consider getting your stuff through my Amazon links as it just kind of helps me make videos, videos in the future. Thanks for watching.